Hey, you never had a big enough weapon. Hey, motherfucker, hey. never learn your lesson. Right. Hey. I'm an 88 pack nigga. Boo. I'm an 88 pack nigga. Boo. 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 I mean, they walk and drink blood, things out. Full moon, motherfucker, change like a hoe. Right. I'm just a nigga from the hood trying to stack a little cheddar for the money. Drew Titan, Bronze on deck. Shout out to the mighty LDBC. Um, <laughs> The sensei isn't feeling too well, but I know he's listening. Salute to my brother, Stormy B, man. You know, he's having a little issue, but he's fine. He's fine. He's just resting it up today. So, um, you know, um, oh, shit. Yeah, I'm reading the I'm reading the text. I'm reading the text. So, um, Tay Jones is hitting me up. But um, we're going to cook with gas in a minute, so I had to bring in another fellow OG. Uh, my brother Bruce goes in the building. Salute to you, man. How you feel? Salute, Drew. A pleasure, man. I, I just appreciate you having me on here, bro, to, to speak to a uh, Rhode Island homeboy who's coming up, man. And, uh, bro, salute out to the chat out there, man. And uh, just, just a pleasure to be here and chop up some real boxing with my brother, Drew Titan. Absolutely, man. Absolutely, man. Um, so we're going to cook. Uh, let me see who's in the chat real quick. King Jr., Viva Tu Vida, Diana Branch, salute. Black Attack, Dwayne Jones, Case Nasty, Ratchet Since 91, Andrew Charles, Jose Diaz, Anwar Willis, Salute Family, I Rock, Salute, La La D in the building, Devin Blocker, Main Event Mark, my fam, Salute, Adrian Vett, <laughs> Cop Aborigines, I'm laughing because Tay Jones just sent me the funniest text. <laughs> and I'm going to ask too, Big Homie Coop, uh, Cop Aborigines, Salute Famo, Young World, Felix Nunez, Chris Chandler, Brooklyn Bourne, Salute, Jeff. Jafar Cesar, salute. Daniel Mitchell, Josh, Tania, what up? Uh, 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 Thomas, good salute, fam. Opulent LD. You know what? I'm going to get Thomas. That's my brother for real. He out here in the Bronx, too. Uh, I'm going to get him on the panel one day. Salute, man. Known that brother since high school. Uh, Willie Beecham, OG Eric, what up? Uh, who else in here? CB. My brother Keon, everything boxing and sports in the building. Boxing MMA 365, salute. MP, what the fuck? What up? What up? What up? What up? All right, the usual suspects. Dark Kent, salute. So until Vinny shows up and uh, we waiting on my, my, my big bro, Trick Nolte. That's the muscle out there in Texas. Always getting it done, man. Uh, until the, uh, until uh, everybody show up, man. Uh, I'm going to cook on it tomorrow again um key of life salute but um yo boy did i have it wrong boy did i have it wrong jay cooley salute i thought herring would take the young man in the deep water and get it done down a stretch to squeeze out a decision nope absolutely not um, Shakur, and shout out to Heron, man. Met him briefly in Vegas. He's always in shape. But damn it, Shakur beat him like a drum. And I don't mind that stoppage because it had been more the same, man. Bruce, your thoughts on last night. That was insane. Yeah, that was, you know, it, it, the the ending was a little more dramatic than I expected. I expected to see a decision, but man, I, you know, Shakur was was what I thought he was going to be. He, he was that much better. I mean, you know, boxing, like we say, it's it's all about levels. And, uh, you know, Jamal Herring, man, shout out to him. Uh, biggest heart out there last night. Uh, you know, he, he took a licking, but still kept came on ticking, bro. You know, he's Semper Fi, bro. But, uh, you know, it was levels. And, and, and like I was saying earlier, Shakur Stevenson, Bro, he, he's the kind of a guy when it was time to go to school, he went to the gym. 
You know, he got he he got his uh, PhD before um, before he, must his class got his high school diploma. And you know, last night he he was just getting better and better with every fight. Uh, you know, having a great fighter, but but not on the same level as Shakur Stevens. Man, he he, he just he shined, and I, I think he's in for bigger and better things. Um, you know, I, I I said this in in many chats around the internet, so I'm not just just uh, talking out like uh, I just uh, just uh, pull this out of my ass today, bro. You know, I've been riding with Stevenson for. A for a while, man, he's just—he's just that good. I think he showed—he he showed me a little bit of young Cassius Clay last night. He, he was dancing around the ring, moving straight back. That's something a boxer just does not do without getting hit. And uh, man, he left there. He, I don't think there was a scratch on his face. I think he could fight in four months. I'd love to see it happen. But uh, man, shout out to Shakur Stevens, bro. Man, Shakur, man, he, like I said, um, my heart was with Shakur. But my mind kept saying Harry. And I'm like, you know, I don't bet with my heart. You know, Shakur from the tri-state area, but I picked Harry. So if, if, if this is eating crow, then that's fine, man. But God damn, I was impressed. I was thoroughly impressed. And you're right, Bruce. Not a mark on his face, man. I ain't got a mark on my face. I'm still pretty. You know, I'm a <laughs> grandson on the card, you know. Um, but man, Shakur... Was that a coming out party or what, man? And um, yeah, no doubt, Trick, we here. Um, man, that was just, a, that was an amazing uh, a display. That was an, from round one to the point where they stopped. I didn't give Harry one round, not one round. And there was nothing, Bo Mack was telling him everything correct in the corner. But what he needed to do, he couldn't execute because, um, Shakur is just that good. Now at the uh, at the uh, um, the post fight, I mean, man, he called out Lomachenko. He called out Lomachenko, man. I heard that. Oh, what, uh, what a fight that, that would be, out? bro! What a, oh, what, what what a fight! There's so so many possibilities right now because Shakur is on fire. Man, you know he and, and and they say cash it in while you're on fire. Don't don't sit back for six months. Don't you know? Obviously, six months is not a long time these days. But for back in the day, that was a long time. Um, yeah. and, and uh, you know what he has to do is is make the move. I mean, he's he's hot. What he needs is 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 to get the. Uh, get his name known out there to the average fan you know i i, I don't call anybody casual because man i'm just a casual bro uh you know it's 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 it, we're all fans of boxing and shakur just has to get his name out there he's got the talent he's got unbelievable talent and when people see that you know maybe we'll get the demand you know, that's that that's the problem today there's just not enough exposure out there you, know, you have to pay to see a, a fighter develop and it's just it's just not going to happen in this day and age bro and and shakur he's he's already uh, he's already a two belt title holder um just keep fighting keep getting those getting those belts keep getting more names on on, on your on your record and uh but I, I i see nothing but 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 going to the top for this man this is this is like a, a sugar ray Leonard of our lifetime man keep your eye on shakur stevens bro. yeah this this kid man and in um um in in where he's at right now 30 35 and he's looked like he hasn't even grown into his man body yet 2025 yeah bro he's yeah man like the weights 130 135 mm. sky's the limit for this kid man he could fight anywhere you know um my gosh man i was thoroughly impressed man I'm not, I'm not mad at the outcome at all i'm not mad that i got the call wrong like i said my heart was with him but my brain kept saying yo just bet with herring because herring might show him he you know if he lost i would have been able to walk away saying um you know, he lost to the better fighter. You understand? Um, but he has room to to learn. But shit, he he ain't learned nothing from from Herman last night. He did the schooling. Mm. From from by the time the second round was over, I was like, damn, is 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 something gonna happen? Well, you know yeah. what he showed me, bro. He showed me he's got that finishing instinct, man. He he saw that cut and he and he zeroed in on it. And and that's the sign of, of of a great fighter when 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 you see when you see an opening and, and you know it's it's this is the end of the fight. Everybody was expecting a long dragged out fight, 
But, bro, it, it, as one-sided as it was, you can't say it was boring. And when he saw that opening, Time for the Kill, he he jumped on him. That was like the, the hawk on the on the, on the the snake, bro. It was There was no escape. That he, Combinations like we haven't seen come out of Shakur before. I mean, it was all offense for, for a three-minute round, bro. Isn't that – that's a far cry from what they were talking about in his last performance. I mean, because they ripped him a new behind on that last oh. performance, didn't they? Oh, and 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 they were, they were uh, complaining it was on so late, but yet n n nobody checked in early last night, bro. No oh, man, I tell you, it, it, they did that because of um, uh, football was on. Um, so I I, I kind of know why they did that, but I if you love boxing, man, I, you I, I was not. I repeat, I was not. I didn't mind eating that crow. I didn't mind, man, because man Shakur. If he wasn't a believer, and, I'm, and you know, I'm happy for him too, because that I didn't like how the media treated him after his last performance. You know, I didn't like that. You know, um, but what people don't understand is that sometimes, um, that, and I and salute to everybody in the chat. I see y'all. You know, we we just cooking right now. Um, sometimes it depends on your dance partner. They can make someone look a certain way. You understand? Uh, for example of that was uh, any. Any uh um any heavyweight that fought John Ruiz, some of them just looked awful because John Ruiz was two punches and a grab, and he's rubbing your, his beard all in your forehead. Very difficult uh, a person to look good against. Um, but look, when you have the right dance partner to bring something certain things out of you, and I believe that that last that last fight was the the, the not the outcome because he won, but the um, the ridicule was in his mind, and he didn't appreciate that. And this was the perfect time uh, for him to display what he is really capable of doing, and he did that against a, a durable top caliber, a champion, a champion. And he looks scary. So what do you think is next for Shakur? Oh, Shakur's endless possibilities. Everybody's talking about the Oscar Valdez match, belt against belt, uh, yeah. a, a little unification at 130. I mean, that that sounds great. That sounds like it, it, it's right on track. But there's, there's endless, endless possibilities. Uh, 135, 140, bro. We could we, we could just start naming names and, and start licking our chops and saying, "Wow, what a, what a fight this is going to be!" And you know the way boxing is now, you have to be on the right side of the fence. You know, you have yeah. to be. Uh, it, it, it's it's a business, and I, I, like I said the other night, I think I was saying it on Stormy's. I'm like an alien on this spaceship, you know, because I I go from a different different boxing generation where you know fights were made, grudges were settled. Now now mm -hmm. it's all about uh, A sides and B sides, and you know. Yeah. Stand yeah, I, I don't. Yeah, I hate this era sometimes. I really, you know, do. it's too much information for a guy like me. You know, it's it's <laughs> it's, it's just m m more than I want to know. It's a, it's above my pay grade, and it's it's confusing to, to, to the average. That's why I think boxing is getting at such a turnoff. You know, because of because of all this this uh you know crazy stuff going on 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 the internet where we hear we hear things that that aren't even possible, but yet the average. You know, the, 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 the so-called casual will hear it and just blow it out of proportion. And, you know, it just turns people off to boxing, I think, man. You know, boxing in the day was a real sport. You could open the newspaper up and you'd see the, the headlines. You'd see and you'd see ratings in there. You'd see the, the uh, schedules of the fights in Madison Square Garden and, you know, throughout, throughout the, the country. But it's, you know, now it's like a, it's a neat little niche kind of a sport where, you know, with people like us, we keep it alive. But I, don't, I, I think if it wasn't for the internet, man, I think boxing would, well, you know, Man, it would go the way of championship ping pong. You know what I'm saying, bro? <laughs> yeah, yeah, it will. It will, man. And so things happen for a reason because, you know, we all know that sometimes talking boxing online, depending on where you go, can be very, like, nerve-wracking. Um, but when you, when, when, you, when, you, when you find the right group where you're talking, when you're discussing it impartially, it can be very refreshing, which is why I am where I am right now. Um, all we want to see is the best fight the best, man. That's all you want to see. And a lot of this, this new era, I understand business, but no one can make me like it. And um, that's that's why I draw the line on certain things. And I don't identify with a lot of behavior. You know, um, I've said this on many occasions. If um, 
if Deontay Wilder and Anthony Joshua was roaming around in the 80s and 90s, they'd had three, three or four fights by now. By now, you know, this A side, B side, I, I, I never identified with it. I didn't like it. I understand it, but I don't like it. You know, um, salute to my brother, main event, Mark. Um, Jafar says, oh, let me get to that in a second. Salute to my brother, main event, Mark. He said, I want a Shockey Foster and Al Bell to get a shot at 130. Hey, man. I'm with it. But um the brother said, um, you scroll back up here. As soon as I had it up, I lost it. He says Shakur versus Gary Russell. I mm. like that. Mm. I like appetizing. that. Yep, appetizing. You know, Gary, they're removing him out of rankings, they're removing him off of lists. He's not active. I don't know what that man has done. Exactly. I don't know what he's done. I don't know. I don't know, but the, the fact that he's not uh uh um when was the last time he fought? Oh, well, over over a year ago. I mean, you know, he's he's an active WBC titleist. Um why can't he get a fight? Why aren't people challenging him? It, it, Nobody wants that belt? <laughs> that's what I don't understand. <laughs> this and this is what I'm saying. Bruce, Legitimate if, this, belt. If, if this was 1986, Gary would have to be beating people off of him with a stick. Oh. There'd be a line out the door looking to get at him. Absolutely. Just to his weight division alone, the names of fighters he'd be fighting, you know, he'd be Alexis Aguayo, or Bobby Chacon, Bazooka yeah. Lamon. Bro, it, 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 there'd be a bottleneck there, and he'd fit right in with them, bro. But I, I, And that's, that's the thing, like we're, we're saying, boxing today, I, I don't know what's going on, and, you know, I'm not going to get excited over it because I'm, I'm trying to be a half full kind of a guy. I'm not I'm not going to let it bother me. I, I come from the generation where they used to feed us filet mignon every night. And now they, they throw us a bologna sandwich and, you know, we attack it like dogs. But, hey, man, <laughs> it, 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 it's, it, it's better than than than, uh, than uh, going hungry, bro. That's the way I look at it, you know? <laughs> yeah, man. Um, man, listen. I, I get it. What it is right now, we're in an era where we're taught to accept things that are mediocre as excellence. And like what Oscar De La Hoya told us in his Instagram video with that weird looking woman behind him, shaving him or whatever she was doing. He said, who knows Devin Haney? You're going to take, uh, what fight did he say? Uh, Garcia versus whoever, and y'all going to like it. Pretty much that's what he said. I said, what are you, who is he telling us what we're going to take and what we're going to like? That's not the fight, and everyone knows who Devin Haney is. That's the guy that y'all are avoiding. So what, what are you talking about? But you see, he said that out loud. But can you imagine if that guy said it out loud? Can you imagine what these promoters and managers are saying behind closed doors? Eh, just give them what they're going to give them. They're going to they're gonna watch anyway. And this is how we're being treated. This is how we're being treated as supporters of the sport. This is our money. We're the consumer. So when we're pushing for... for, for uh, um, um, hold on. Uh, hold on. I'm sending out this text. Hold on. Yeah, you know, um, I'm the consumer. If, if, if I want a, a, a pizza pie, don't tell me, now. Nah, take this bowl of chili and like it. You understand what I'm saying? Oh. I want what I want when I want it. And I'm tired of these the way what people will never understand how messed up that was for Oscar to say that to us. They'll never understand that. That's messed up that he told us, yo, we're going to take it. You're like, and there's a handful of people that are going to identify with that for their own reasons. And I'm not going to get into that. But as a consumer, you know, that's not right. You know, that's not the fight. You know, we know who Devin Haney is because you know who he is. You know, and speaking of Devin, salute to Stephen Lamont Hawkins, man, because he said he's saying the right thing. He should have fought Devin. And that's the type of time I'm on because um, you see, they kind of needed each other. Not kind of, they needed each other. Because by now they'd have fought. And we'd have had uh an idea, you know, of, of what's what by now. Because um, as you can see. Devin's running around WBC champion. Nobody wants to fight him. Gary Russell hasn't had a fight in two years. You understand? Nobody's active. 
and they were right there on the on the brink of getting something done and for whatever reason because i wasn't involved in the situation directly for whatever reason it didn't happen meanwhile neither one of them can get a fight so what they should have done in my opinion was just fought each other have two fights two three fights with each other because we would have paid for it to consume that was a hot fight that was that was a fight that started here on youtube right and people on old media started talking about it so i said look there's a market for that all they need to do is cross the t's and dot the i's man and i don't know why it didn't go through i know it just didn't go through and now we're seeing that hey man it should have happened because what has gary done since then he hasn't done anything and we know how the business treats certain fighters you know for lack of better words they should have just did it man they should have just did it this is just a goofed up situation and now we got we got freaking oscar de la hoya you know sitting on a a, a cabinet full of utensils telling us we're going to take certain fights and we're going to like it i mean this is where we at well, what about that that WrestleMania sideshow last week in in the parking lot with with, with Telefimo and, and Devin, bro? I mean, not if they can't get a fight going because of that, the publicity they got there, and I mean that that blew every that blew up every every show the next day. I mean, you know, there were there were heated words exchanged, bro. The fathers were ready to go at it. You know, if the, if that's not if that's not fuel for a fight, can you imagine Ali and Joe Frazier pulling a stunt like that, bro? I mean, oh. that would just add fuel to the fire, add pay-per-view sales. But now we're not even hearing about the fight being being mentioned anymore. We're hearing it, they're going in different directions, bro. And that was like, that was the, the perfect storm right there. I mean, you know, uh, well, you, you you talked to Bob. Never mind talking to Bob. We're right here. And Eddie's standing there. Man, why, why didn't they get some, some bean counter to pull out a piece of paper and, and have a fucking, excuse my French, have a signing right there, man. Because that was like the perfect opportunity. The world was watching, bro. And if they weren't, they were going to see it in an hour, you know, in the, the, uh, the, the, the age we're in. I mean, social media is a gift and a curse. You know, um, the, the brilliant part about it is that um, we're in a now society. And um, at any point, you know, um, we could find out any fighter what they're doing if they choose to post it. I mean, you know, we come from an era where... By the time we got the boxing news, it was already a month and a half old. You understand oh. what I'm saying? And, oh. and now we're blessed where we can find out in real time what's happening. But unfortunately, these guys can't juggle fast enough because they they get caught up lying. I'll never forget when Tia Fimo was live on Instagram. Um, it, we, 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 um he was saying that yo i sent the contract to devin devin haney or bill or whatever and i sent one to uh uh um cambosis whoever gets it back to me first they get the oh, fight yeah 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 that the terms all this other bullshit. yeah it so happened that bill at that moment was on show boxing talk at that very moment and someone went in the chat and said bill someone uh, uh tia Fimo said he sent you a contract and in real time he said I'm, I got my phone in my hand. I'm by my fax machine. I have nothing. So this kid just lied, like straight to his his public space. Now whether they want to hold him accountable for that or not, that's entirely up to them. But I know that that happened. I was watching that day. I was watching the whole day. I was like, what? What, what contract? What? I jumped on Instagram and saw him. He didn't send anything. So this guy's been ducking and dodging and hiding and lying and everything else, but no, a select few doesn't want to hold them accountable. The bottom line is this here. We're the consumer at the end of the day. We take days off of work. We put in miles. We have to hop on planes, drive our vehicles, rent cars, get people together, get motel rooms to come support these fighters just to have their managers get on Instagram and say, yo, take this fight and you're going to like it. This, this is not real life right here. Uh, salute to Brooklyn Born in that super chat. My sub appreciation. He said, boxing needs to get their act together. Tank about the fight. Roley, T are running from everybody, and and Jerron still don't have a fight. And that's that's another, man. Boots, boots knock the shit out of everybody. Devon Sense in the building, man. Salute to you, brother. What's good? Yo, yo, yo. Thanks for having me on, man. 
So I just woke no. up, checked my notification, saw my man Drew Titan. Drew Titan on deck. What do my man like to say? Lightweight. Lightweight. <laughs> Lightweight, baby. <laughs> yep. Uh, what's going on, Bruce? So, salute, Devon. How are you, brother? Nice to nice to actually talk to you, man. Yeah, for sure, for sure. I always see you dropping in the chats and showing respect and love and all that. So yeah, it's good to good to finally meet you. What's uh what's on the menu tonight, gentlemen? Uh, we're waiting for Vinny Pass to show up. Um, you know, nice. so waiting for him to show up. And uh, but in the meantime, we cooking on um last night and um. What can Shakur do moving forward? He has all the options in the world. So what's your take on that? Yeah, I mean, I predicted Shakur to win. So I'm not really surprised, to be honest with you. Um, in my official breakdown prediction video, I kind of told people that you can't take it lightly that Shakur is an Olympic medalist. You know what I mean? Silver medalist uh, in Rio. And the dude has got skill. Uh, but, you know, I never doubted uh herring i knew i knew herring had a chance just based off of his experience being a marine being a dog i knew he'd come to fight but my main thing was going into the fight and it was it was very apparent was the hand speed difference and the in and out movement man and i told people all the time like it's one thing to come forward and punch quickly but to get out of the way quickly too you know that's right, something that right. manny that's that's something that manny pacquiao did very well in his prime just he pop 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 pop, pop and he pop out Right, so every time, right. every time you try to counter, it's too late, you know. And you can tell that Herring tried to change it up around the fourth, fifth round because he knew sitting back trying to counter punch wasn't working because he couldn't catch him. So then he tried to come forward a little bit. He was pumping the jab, trying to walk him down, and he was beating uh, Shakur a little bit in the clinch. Yeah, and I told people, oh, okay, well he's now he's changing his tactics, you know, pounding the rib cage and the in the clinch and stuff like that, but. The crazy thing is Shakur made an adjustment and then he didn't get beaten the clinch anymore. And once that <laughs> happened, that was game over at that point. Yeah, definitely. I agree. I agree. There was no, there was no part. That's what I'm saying. I don't have any problem with that stoppage because those last two rounds wouldn't have, made, <laughs> wouldn't have made a difference. Shakur looked fresh. He didn't slow down. Um, um, That was a one-sided I don't want to say mauling, but I want to say a one-sided <clears throat> boxing lesson. That's what it was. Yeah. Uh, salute yeah. to Diana Branch in that super chat. Much love and appreciation, my sis. She said, we don't give a honk honk about their pockets. Don't care about their followers. Just fight. Damn, we got to hold these fighters accountable. End of. That's right. Hold them accountable because this is ridiculous at this point. It's ridiculous. My brother Trick Nolte in the building. Summon everybody to the panel. Salute, salute. Everybody in the yes. chat. Salute, salute. What's up, my Sorry. brother Trick? Bruce goes, what it do? What it do, OG? Hanging in, bro. Hanging in, waiting for waiting for the homeboy to come down. Yeah, I just got off the phone with him, man. He said he's clicking the link, man. So I'm uh, just waiting on him to come on in. So nice. no, if you need me to send it again, I'll send it. It's no big deal. Okay. You know, but um yeah, man, we cooking on last night, man. Shakur Stevens, man. Shakur Stevenson was incredible, man. That was incredible. And you know, Drew, I don't know why I don't know why more people didn't talk about this fight. I, I know the promotional side was quite terrible. Um, and it was overshadowed by Fury Wilder as well, to be fair. <laughs> but at the same time, like how do how are people not excited about this fight? You know, it's like it's a great fight, stylistically as well. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, like I said, I, I, I thought it was going to go in, in a particular direction where Shakur would have to be wondering that I put enough rounds in the bank to uh, squeeze this one out. I thought it was going to be a lot closer than it was. I mean, damn, 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 damn. I understand Bruce with the uh, Ali reference. I, I totally get it. I get it, man. Because did, yeah. did Shakur look like he even had a fight last night at all? He was he was, he was blessed by the boxing gods. There's no no doubt about that, bro. Special special individual. Yeah, that 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 was just. I was like, totally impressed. By the end of the second round, I said, "What what am I looking at here? I thought it'd be yeah. closer than this." 
Then round five, I said, nothing's changing. Round seven, nothing's changing. I said, yo, this is over. This is over. But you know what? You know what, Drew? I saw, I don't know if you noticed, but Herring, his his demeanor and his reaction after the fight, it's it, it kind of showed me that, like, deep down, he kind of knew that this might happen. Yeah. He's like, you know, it's like he was ready to fight. He was ready to go out on a shield, no doubt about that. But it's like deep down he knew, like, this kid is a problem. You know what I mean? Like, I'm going to have to try to catch him and hurt him. And if I can't do that, he's going to be a problem. He was very humble, very gracious after the fight, taking pictures. And, mm -hmm. you, you, you know, he was a little bit shocked at the stoppage originally, but he let that shit go quick. Yeah, is this no is it normal for his wife not to come sit uh, by ringside and watch him fight? Is that normal? I didn't even think about that because she didn't even come outside. And she's sitting mm. in the back the whole time. Yeah, she was back there. She was backstage the whole time. And um, oh, you're right. Yeah, yeah, yeah. They were putting yeah. the camera on her. She was backstage. <laughs> by yeah. the time he came back there, he looked like Meatloaf. Mm. And I ain't talking about the singer. Yeah, she wouldn't show her face either. Yeah, she had her she had her hair all on the side like you couldn't even see her face at first. Yeah, that was yeah. I, I like the sportsmanship, man. That was good, you know. Um, but Shakur got Shakur got the, the man. Well, so bro, when, when Vinny comes on, you can ask him what his mother used to do while he was fighting. Mm -hmm. uh, that, that's a that's gonna be an interesting story, bro. Because I, I I've heard much, much about that, bro. You know, oh yeah! Oh how, man, how I can't affect, wait. How it affects immediate members of the family, bro? Oh yeah! Oh. Wow! This is this is definitely a, a microphone drop moment after that one, man. Yo, yo Drew, how 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 were your parents when you when you played sports? Because I to me, oh, my dad was always my dad was always crazy, yelling at the referees and shit, and my, running down my the dad, sidelines. My but dad. my mom was always like, she didn't care. Win or lose, honey, I love you. You know, type shit. <laughs> well, well, well. Salute the main event, Mark. He says Xander Zayas impressed me. Kid only sixteen, seventeen. Yeah, that kid. Yeah, that kid's gonna be an issue. Yeah, let, let me cook on him real quick. I'm telling y'all, man. Go look at Fernando Vargas when he was young. The fights with Raul Marquez. The fights with uh, Yori Bar Compass. Um, mm -hmm. He had a couple more, a few other guys he fought. Um, Man, I can't think of this guy's name, but side by side on him, the feints, the left hook to the body, tripling and doubling up. Man, that kid looks just like a young Fernando Vargas, man. I'm telling you. Yeah, that, that kid, that, that kid is uh whew. that kid is gonna I, I he, man. Um I'm trying to think. See, when I see young fighters like that, I want to look at maybe a year, maybe 18 months down the road where they're gonna be. Um, him, I see him. Damn, I'm, you know what? Let me not put that out there. I'm scared to say, but mm. let's just, I'll just say this. He's going to be a problem. Yeah. That kid's going to be a problem. problem. He, he, he's sharp. That kid's going to be a problem. Um, but to answer divine sense question, um, my dad was the calm one. It was my mother that was looking for all the smoke. When she when she watched me compete, no matter what it was, football, wrestling, yo, she wanted all the smoke. You know, my my dad was the calm one. Mm. You know, um, but that 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 was that was hilarious. Well, you know, he calm, but you know, I mean, he he always had a pistol on him. But you know, that's that's what it is, legal, legal. But my mother would look for all the smoke, and they never sat with each other. You know, wow. But you know, no matter what, yeah, whether it was yeah. a tackle or, I'm like, ma, I didn't even do anything. We, we just snapped the ball, and and mm. you know, I had nothing to do with the play. <laughs> you know, but hey, man, that's what it is, man. That's what it is. Salute, <laughs> salute, <laughs> Jafar Cesar. He said, watching Shakur fight last night, I will be injured every time he called my name. <laughs> <laughs> Yo, man. Yo, man. Look. Look, man. Mm. That dude, Shakur. I heard, as soon as he said Lomachenko, I said, uh-oh. So no matter no matter where Lomachenko turned, you got Devin over here. 
And I'm going to yes, say this for the record right now. Mm-hmm. Take Ryan Garcia's ass off the list. Get him off there. He was on whose list? In a year. One he year. Was on, he was on the pound for pound list? Where? Go check out Ring TV. He's oh, number two no. or three. Wow. Where? Wow. Ring TV. Check it out right now. Ring TV. RingTV.com. It's oh, like number no. three. I went live about it last night. I was like, this man, he he's, he's lucky if we put him in the top 10. I don't even care. I don't even care, personally. Uh, let me see. Ratings. I, I, he's, a, he's ahead of Devin Haney. I know that. And he's inactive. Mm-hmm. Wow. He out there making videos with Logan Paul. Oh, I, I hurt my hand. Wait, this what I'm looking at right now is a. Uh, hold on, let me. You know what I'm gonna do? I'm gonna share the screen. Yeah, this is. Th- th- wow. Is this it? This what I'm looking at. Yeah, go to uh, go to 130. Go to lightweight. All right. You got to go up. Yeah, so you have the weight classes. Yeah, junior lightweight. They got it vacant. This okay. Clearly, this isn't updated. Yeah. Clearly, it's not updated. Oh, maybe he's on one thirty-five. Maybe he's on one thirty-five. <clears throat> yeah, he he got to be on one thirty. Yeah, number two. See. Whoa. Ahead of Devin Haney. <clears throat> whoa, 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 whoa. <laughs> Yeah, I got. I, it's a good thing that I let me let me let me kill this screen share. <laughs> Salute, Vinny. What up? <laughs> How Five you doing, times. Man? What's up, brother? There you go. There you go. All good. All good. How you doing? I'm doing. I'm doing pretty good. It could be better. It could be much worse. <laughs> yeah, no doubt. No doubt, man. Glad to have you on, man. Glad to have you on, man. Cool. Glad to be here with you. So um, since, since you're the guest, I have I have a couple of guests here. Um, you already you already know Trick Nolte, my brother Divine Sense in the building. Um, he's in a whole other country right now. But um, you have a neighbor on here, my brother Bruce Goes, man. I'm gonna let him lead right now. This is your oh, neighbor bro. right here. Hey, right, here bro. Bruce Goes, Bristol, Rhode Island, yelling at you, bro. How you doing, man? Hey, who's this? This is Bruce. Bruce Goes. Oh shit! How you doing? Hanging in there, my brother. Bristol, Rhode Island. Cool, cool. <laughs> hey, hey, bro. You know what I want to start it off with? The first time I saw you fight professionally, bro, you you tore the Providence Civic Center wide open, man. Joe Frazier Jr. Joe met, bro, Frazier. Was, oh man, yeah, yeah. That was an awesome fight, bro. You you, you wow. got to remember that you sold out the Civic Center, man. Joe Frazier oh, himself is God. there. Yeah, that was one of the highlights of my life. Yeah, that was that was a lifetime highlight for sure. It's right up there with the five world title belts. Mm. Mm. I was lucky enough to walk in and get a ticket there, man. And you know, it seems like uh, uh, two seconds after I got in, it was sold out. And I think that was the first time Providence Civic Center was ever sold out for a, you know the, the the most people ever had jammed in there for for, for an event, bro. First time. Yeah, was, was, that, was that like a highlight that night he's talking about? Was that a highlight of your career? Oh, my God. Yeah, uh, that's one of the highlights of my life. 1,000%. Wow. Oh, that was yeah. electricity. It, it's, up, it's right up there. It's right up there with the five belts. That Ooh. Joe Frazier night, my God, it was magic. Uh-huh. It was it, it, the the crowd was it was like it was around fifteen thousand people in the place. It was nuts. Well, you was always a uh, a high energy fighter, man. And wherever you went, even when you was an underdog, you brought a cult following with you that I you rarely see. I mean, there's a, there's a few people, there's a few fighters that had that. Um, Torgatti. 
you know, Mickey Wards, you know. Yeah. But you always brought a cult following, man. And it wasn't only blood yeah. relatives. I can I know that for a fact. But there was people yeah. that just rooted for you wherever you went, man. How did you cool. um, how do you how did you manage that charisma when you when you walked into a ring? It was like electrifying. Yeah, you're 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 exactly right what you're saying. And you know, it just some of it some of it was just it just it's just me that you know that's just who I am and 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 what I do and you know and then a little bit you know I I tried to I tried to bring people I tried to make them come and see me you know I I I either I was a little bit like I grew up I I started boxing the only reason why I boxed is because I loved this guy called Muhammad Ali yeah. Yeah, he was the greatest. He was the greatest in, in everything. Not not just not just boxing. He was like he was like an empress to me. You know, he was he was he was like the pope to to me. You know, <laughs> he was like the pope, Muhammad Ali. He was the bomb. He he. You know, I love me. He, he brought black and white together. You know, yep. which is a beautiful thing. He was awesome. It, like everything was awesome about him, you know, and and I tried to I tried to be like him. Like I never I never stayed down. Nobody kept me down. Nobody ever kept him down. He got up all the time. I got up all the time, no matter who it was. You damn sure did, man. You you, know? you was always dangerous. Uh, uh, from rounds one down. through twelve, you was always dangerous, man. Um. Um, you hey, had a, hey, uh, hey, hey, how about this? How about this? No, no, no. One, one through fifteen. Through fifteen. Thank you. I, yeah. I you fought go. the last fight. I fought the last fifteen round fight in the history of boxing. Oh wow. Oh wow. Yeah, that was it's it's amazing. And I got my ass kicked, but I still I made it to the end. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, you wow. That was so you fought the last actual yeah sanctioned fight that was fifteen rounds. Yep, fifteen rounds needs to come back, man, because that separates the men from the boys. Uh, well, one thousand percent. Yeah, my God. Yeah, was that the Haugen rematch, Vinny? Yes, it was. Yes. Hey, I got a KO magazine in front of me right now, man. Nineteen eighty-eight. It's got you and Haugen on the cover. And you guys did a tele you guys did a telephone a telephone interview. You remember that one, bro? It was no holy bar, man. I hate that douchebag. <laughs> <laughs> oh, this man. day you hate him. Wow. So what, what's what's the story with Haugen? For those that don't know, there's a lot of uh young cats in here. He, Tell us about just, that. He's just he's an old douchebag. And and if you <laughs> see him, if you see him now, like like he was a tough little sucker, but he's a little crybaby. You know, I, I beat him in the first fight in in my hometown. I was so there, I bro. Fight him, I fight him the second fight in Atlantic City. I, I just I just couldn't make the weight. I, I couldn't make the weight. And it it it, it killed me. Literally. Oh shit, we lost him. Damn it. Yeah, hopefully, hopefully jumps back in. Yo, Trick, hit him up. Tell him that we lost him. He probably hit a button by accident. Okay. Salute to the track. I see y'all. I'm, I'm just letting. I'm just letting the, the, the brother cook. Man, I, I salute to all y'all. I see y'all. Mm. Fifteen rounds, Drew. Damn. <laughs> Fifteen rounds. Still Hill. He said, "Haugen is 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 by your way, Phil Hill." Wow. Yeah, and Bruce was saying earlier, man, he said, I bet these guys still hate each other <laughs> right now. Oh, that yeah. Is I, 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 bet I bet there's a couple of names I can mention that he won't have a good word for today, man. That's the way it is mm. in Rhode Island, bro. We keep that swag, man. <laughs> oh, man. <laughs> there we go. There we go. There we go. Did we make right, it back? Yeah, you yeah are we got my you. Brother. We got you back. Cool, cool. All right. So where, where'd I leave off at? Um, Haugen. Oh, making the weight and killing yourself. Making the weight. Bro. Making the weight. Uh, yeah. 
The second oh, fight. Oh, when you had to get down for Gaza, bro, didn't you just about uh, die walking the ring? Another one. That's another another terrible fight, you know? And, and and he was a bad dude. He was a world champion fighter. But wow. couldn't make the weight. I couldn't make the weight. And and what, thank what God. One one thirty-five, then one forty. Wow. Yeah, nuts. And um Thank God Kevin Rooney came into my life where I probably would have died. You know, I probably, I probably would have died losing weight and getting beat up. But um, Kevin came into me and I go to his and I'm sparring at his gym in Catskills. And uh, I jump in there with his best middleweight. So I go, we're supposed to go five rounds. I beat the tar out of this dude. Good kid. I, you know, he's, he's one of my buddies today. Muta. I beat the tar out of him. And I get on the scale after. And um, Kevin puts it on, on one, one, one four. And I said, Kevin, what are you doing? Move it up. He goes, what do you mean move it up? This is what you fight up. He said, yeah, but I'm not fighting now. Move it up. <laughs> <laughs> so, so he moves it up five pounds. I said, what are you doing? Five pounds. Move it up to 160. He goes, 160. <laughs> and, and wow. You know, crazy, crazy. Um, he moved it up and kept going up and up and up. I, I, weigh, I weighed out at 158. And and he couldn't believe it. He said, "What the hell are you doing?" He said, "You out of your mind, making money. You just beat my best middleweight." And, and like, what are you doing? You're fighting at 140. Are you crazy? So, thank God, thank God, thank God, I, I had him because I would have, I would have, I would probably would have died. Wow. Yeah, you yeah. never, you never stopped at at welterweight, did you, Vinny? No, 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 no. I went right up to junior middleweight. Yeah, I went, I went up to junior middleweight, then I skipped, I skipped middleweight, and I went up, and I won three super middleweight titles. So it was a good thing. That's that good Italian food up on the hill, brother. <laughs> <laughs> I was there last night. <laughs> <laughs> wow. the first time, when I went to the Civic Center, I got great parking spots. I went to Angelo's, loaded up, man. Walked to the Civic mm -hmm. Center. That's a night I'll never forget either, brother. Wow, Angelo's. <laughs> <laughs> you see, Bruce, that's why I brought you Classic. on, man. Classic. That's exactly I why I brought you on. And on a good night, we go to Jimmy Birchfield's. Uh, absolutely, Jimmy B. There's no, there's no one like him. Vinny, do you know how many? Diners in uh, Midtown Manhattan got your picture on it. Really? No, I didn't know that. Yeah, that you you at some point you've gone in there, gotten a sandwich, and someone has always stopped and taken a picture with you, and it's up on the wall. I'm I'm gonna tell you why. Because I I was I was dating probably the hottest the hottest sister. In scores. Uh oh. Uh oh. Yeah. Hold on. Hold on. What scores? Let them know what scores is. I know what scores is. Go ahead. Scores. Scores is an adult dealership. <laughs> it's not around anymore, but I know what scores is. I know what it is. Yeah. yeah. It, it, it it used to be an adult dealership. <laughs> okay. Yeah. I was with Dion. She was a bad dude. Oh my god. She was so hot. And, uh, and 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 that's when that's that's going back like into the nineties, like uh -huh. where, where people didn't like see like black and white together. And you uh -huh. know, I got more, I got more like like, like I I could have gotten more fights over that than anything in my my entire life. Yeah, <laughs> but she she was she was so cool, and I still talk to her once in a while now. Yeah, she lives uh -huh. in Florida. She was yeah, the bomb. That that's yeah. why a lot of people remember me from New York City, because I used to stay there with her for for the weekends all the time. There's like 
four different diners that I've been through. And I'm like, Vinny was here. Vinny was here. Vinny was here. I said, wow. man. <laughs> I said, shit, they got a lot of pictures of this man up around. I was like, what's that about? Yeah, um, scores. Howard Stern used to frequent there a lot. Yeah, yeah, I did I did Howard's show twice. Yeah, yeah. How Howard's funny as hell, man. Oh he's my god, dude. He's, he's unbelievable. Howard's yeah, he, he was he was the master. Yeah, yeah. Oh yeah. Oh yeah. Oh yeah. So um wow, so much to, so much to cover. You've had a very interesting and inspirational career. Um, talk to me about the time when you thought it was over, where you was told it was over, but you said, yeah. nah, I'm not done. Right. Talk to me about that. Well, it was, it was um, a couple weeks after I won the world title, the, the best fight of my life. I, uh, I stopped uh, Gilbert Delay in the um, 12th round. And um, I, I just, I just thought, I, I thought I found God after that fight. Like literally, it was a crazy, it was a crazy, crazy happening. You know, I, I, I won the title. Like I won the big title. It was a WBA title, and um, on national television, you know, everything, the things were great at end. And I was seeing Dion in yeah, the yeah. scores. <laughs> now, now, now I'm really going down to New York. Uh -huh. Oh man! And uh, just just got in a bad car accident, car wreck, and um, you know the, the doctor, you know, was saying things that I didn't want to hear. And you know, I just I just got lucky. I got I got I, I worked hard. I I, I didn't tell people. I worked my ass off, and I try. I tried, you know, to come back is 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 strong. It was the only thing I wanted to do in life was fight, and and um, and win world titles. And um, I, I got I got major league lucky, and um, and I worked my ass off, and, and things worked out worked out for the best. Yeah, man, that's um. That was, I remember uh, seeing it on the news. Yeah, that was crazy. You know, right? They're gonna do this. this um, there's a big company that's gonna do a um, a huge documentary on me, and uh, I can't talk about it too much. But it's gonna be off the hook, and and it's gonna be nicknamed. It's gonna be named the greatest comeback in the history of sports. Mm. Mm pretty cool yeah that that's that's right up there man because not that many people yeah. could come back from you know the neck injuries to the point where you have to wear the halo it, oh my god wearing that thing was unbelievable and and taking it off was even more unbelievable oh my wow. god that was the that was the most painful moment in my entire life Taking the screws out of my skull. Out of oh. your skull. Oh man. Oh my I, I god. Can't, I, I can't imagine that. Uh, it, it, was, to, it was horrendous. It was horrendous. Uh, salute to my brother Stephen Lamont Hawkins. He says, Mr. Vinny, what's the hill? They want to know what the hill is. And um <laughs> he, he and he wants to know was your was your mother at um at your fights? Oh no, no, no. My mother never came to any fights. She stayed home and prayed. She um she had a shrine. She had a Vinnie Paz little shrine. <laughs> she was cute. I got, I got lucky. You know, you, you got to be lucky in life. You got to be lucky to have good parents because, you know, who knows what your parents are going to be like. I I got very lucky and I, I had a great mom, a great dad. You know, that's that's why I won. That's why I won those things. Right. I wouldn't have won one without them. Like, honest to God, for real. So, what? What's the hill? That was the other part of his question. Mm. Let's know what the hill is. It's Federal Hill, which was like you know back in the day when things were, were like crazy as hell, and and, and there, there was there was whites, there were blacks, and there, there were Italians. <laughs> in mm. Fed, 
Federal Hill, the hill, was Italian. Like, it, you know, when I looked back at it, like, I was going, this is crazy. I should, they have a, a red, white, and green stripe down in the middle of the street mm -hmm. of, of, of what the guy is asking about, Federal Hill. That's what it was. And that now, of course, it's, you know, it's much different. But, but it's, still, it's, still, it's still got that Italian atmosphere. You know, there's good food up there. I go, yeah, I that's, that's, um, I go there once in a while to eat because they got a great restaurant. Yeah, that's similar down here, down over in the Bronx. We got Little Italy on Arthur Avenue. Matter of totally fact, Bronx, same thing. Bronx Terrace, something over there. Yeah, same they, thing. They, yes. when, you, when you're driving down Fordham Road, you'll see a big old picture of, um, what's his name from the movie? Uh, Sonny. I know. I know. Yeah, I know. I know what you mean. <laughs> yeah, nice, nice neighborhood. I, I never had a problem over there. You know, nice, nice neighborhood. The food yeah. is great, of course. Of course, the food is great over there. Food is great over yeah. there, man. Yeah, that's that's like it is on the hill here in Rhode Island. That's awesome, yo, man. Yo, Drew, can yo. I jump in here real quick? Go ahead. How you doing, champ? Uh, thanks for uh, for jumping on tonight and being a part of this conversation. Um, cool. You you were you were fighting a little bit before my time. Uh, I was born in the late '80s, so I heard a lot of it, a lot of it from my dad. My dad told me a lot about you, and um, when I started oh, wow. growing up in boxing, he's like, "Hey, you gotta go check out Vinny, go check out his style." Um, wow. And one of the fights that my dad had me watch was you against Roger Mayweather. Uh, and worst, worst fight was, of my life. I was hoping that <laughs> I was hoping that you would tell us. That was that was that was one fight that was terrible for me. Terrible. I couldn't I couldn't make 140. And and Roger Roger was throwing bombs at me and, and, and nailing me. I couldn't get out of the way of anything. I it was the worst fight of my life. But I I only had really to be honest with you, I've had a handful of bad fights. In 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 the all all the world champion fighters, you know, I, I, I lost to world champions only. That's the only people that beat me. No 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 great fighters beat me. World champions beat me. Like that was real great. And um, that that night, that was a bad night. God, I, I almost died after that fight was over. I was dying if my father wasn't with me. In the hospital after the fight was over, I would have died because mm. um, I, w I, w I was so dehydrated. Mm. I was so dehydrated. Roger, Roger knocked me down for the first time in my life. I got I got knocked down. I was so embarrassed. And when I was sitting there and I got two IV, an IV in each arm of mm. my arm. And they got two, two, like, two tubes going into each arm to, to rehydrate me up. I, I, I felt like I felt terrible. I was so embarrassed that that he dropped me. Like everyone, everyone was there. It was such a big fight because I was the undercard feature. The main. Sugar Red Leonard and uh, Sugar Red Leonard and uh, Danny Lalan. Danny Lalan. If you remember that. Yeah. 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 So, yeah. and Roger was shot with attack. He just he beat the shit out of me. God, I was so bad that night. And um, mm. I just thank God I didn't die because I was dying. Like mm. the nurse, the nurse said, if my father. Thank God my father was with me because the Duvis, you know, they, the, the, my manager and, and trainer, my promoter, they, they didn't come with me. They, they could give a shit. You know what I mean? You know, thank, thank God my father came with me because the nurse said to, to my dad, and I heard it, but I, I just didn't give a shit. And the nurse said, Mr. Pazienza, we're losing your son. He's only got one heartbeat every 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 six to eight seconds. You, you, you gotta do some. 
So my father, when she told her that, he grabbed me, grabbed my shirt, and um, he started shaking me violently. And, and I can remember it, you know. You know he, he, he was telling me, you know, champ, I don't care, you lost, don't do this, don't do this. And thank God, thank God he was there. We we wouldn't be talking right now. Mm. Wow. Right? Yeah. And I invite everybody to go watch the fight. It's on YouTube, Roger Mayweather versus Vinny Paz. Uh, the entire fight's on it. And uh, it, you know what's amazing? see that fight. <laughs> but you know what, yeah. Vinny? You know what's amazing about that fight? You you know you didn't show any any signs of, of, of being tired of being or, or or being dehydrated. You you still tried to fight. And as a as a casual observer, they probably wouldn't have known. You know what I mean? And uh, yeah. you still try to exchange with him. You, you you were in his face. You were talking a lot of smack to him. You're you're chasing him to his own corner. And mm -hmm. and a lot of people would have thought, oh, you know, Vinny Vinny's trying to win. So um, now we're here in the real story, which is yeah. what we appreciate because was, this is the stuff we I, don't I know. Was, I was trying to stay alive. And like it was so crazy that night. It was that was that was one of the worst nights of my life. That that night, I, I got I was so I was so like disappointed in myself. I, I got dropped. I got dropped for the first time ever in my fucking life. Like mm. holy shit! Like what the fuck? And mm. I knew like everybody was at the fight because back then everybody used to go see Sugar Ray Leonard fights. Yeah. You know? Everyone was there. I mean, like, like, how about this? I've been to the Playboy Mansion five times after that. But you have to know was there. Frank Sinatra was there. I'm looking right now. I got a picture of him in, in my in my room right now. Um, he signed me a, a photo, Frank Sinatra. Oh, said, blue eyes. Oh, blue eyes. He was too big. He says, you're the best. <laughs> who who says that? <laughs> That's crazy, man. Yeah. He's calling yeah. me the best. So crazy. But look, no. I'll show you right now. Like, I'll show you. Watch. I'll, I'll show you. Let me see if I can put on another light. See, Let's see if you can see this. Oh, yeah. yeah. Oh, yeah. yeah. Wow. Yeah. Wow. Yeah, really, really cool. And he said, he goes, to Vinny Paz, you're the best. And he signed it. Wow. Frank, Frank Sinatra. How cool is that? Yeah, man. You know, it'll get, yeah. see, you know, a little bit, there's some young cats in here, but man, Frank, Frank is an OG, man. <laughs> yes. Frank, Frank is an OG. He's oh, an OG. Man. Yeah. Yo. Yo, Vinny Paz, got a question for you. What's up, man? How you doing? Let's hear it, bro. Let's hear it. You know, um, I was kind of thinking about something. Um, you beat Greg Hogan in 87 uh, for the IBF title. And I remember Chavez had fought um, Edwin Rosario and won the WBA, WBA belt. Um, he moved up. And yeah. to me, y'all two, that would have been a money fight. But was there a rematch clause with you and Greg Hogan that prevented that from happening? Or you think that uh, Chavez and Don Keenum just probably ducked you? You know what? No, I... um. I, I I wanted to fight Haugen again just because I hated him so much. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I hated that little fucker. <laughs> yeah, he's a, he's oh, a little maggot, he's a little maggot douchebag. But <laughs> <laughs> see what goes around comes around. See, he hey, was Jimmy. he was a nasty motherfucker when I fought him, and now wow. if, you see, if you see him now. <laughs> like, like right now, I work out every day. I shadow box all the time. You know, I'm I'm still fast as lightning. And that motherfucker looks like he's been through the fucking the war. He he looks like he's been through every war that's ever been happening in this <laughs> earth. Oh <laughs> God, he's like a mess. Oh man. Hey, one more. Hey, Vinny. Who? Do, hey, who do you hate more, Greg Hogan or Dangerous Dana Rosenblatt? Oh, that was my question. <laughs> Knew that was coming. <laughs> oh man, I ain't heard that name forever. 
That's a good one. Oh. That's a good one. And you know what? They're they're at equal levels of douchebags. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Oh man. Two that is hilarious. Bags. Yeah, no, everybody fun. expected you to patch the to pass the torch over to Rosenblatt, bro. You hit him in the head with it. That's what you did, bro. <laughs> yes. <laughs> yeah. That's what I did. God, did I knock him out? Yeah, and and I, I got fined. I got fined for that too. Oh, you, you you hit the referee for Christ's sake, trying to get at him. Poor Tony Orlando. <laughs> Tony Orlando, Tony, I love Tony. He's like the greatest guy. He, he, I, I swear to God, he's like the greatest guy. I called him that night, and and I said, I said, Tony, I said, I'm so sorry, you know, <laughs> Vinny Paul. He, he, he said, Vinny, don't worry, you kid, don't worry about it. That's nothing. That's nothing. I said, No, Tony, I'm really sorry. I feel bad. I said, I said, I got, I got to, I got to pay, I got to pay it ten thousand dollars for that. And um, oh. he said, Vinny, don't worry about it. He said, one, he said, promise me one thing. I said, whatever you want. He goes, I want a rematch. <laughs> <laughs> That's some funny shit, man. Yeah, it is. That is man. hilarious, man. Yeah, totally. Um, I want you to, because um, everybody wants to know, I'm sure some people have heard it, most haven't. Um, take us through the night you fought Roy Jones Jr. He was a guest on a couple of weeks ago. He's a, he's a, he's a real good dude. Um, good dude, good dude. I was just with him in Atlantic City at um, Hall of Fame, a, a big event. I forget, I forget what the frigate is. You know, a, after you get hit in the head a, a million times, you don't remember all things. <laughs> um, but uh, yeah, I was just with him. He he's a really good dude. Um, he was he and, and when I fought him, when when I fought Roy Jones Jr. He was he was the greatest thing, like next to next to bread, next to next to he was the greatest thing next next to the, there was nobody that could touch him when I fought him. That was when at one sixty, right? At one sixty eight. One sixty eight. And okay. then he went. He went. His next fight, he wins the heavyweight championship of the world. You know, mm. I'm 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 five seven on a good hair day. <laughs> But yeah, you were you were you were game for that fight though, man. You didn't back down. Top of his game, you know what? And 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 let me tell you. See, people don't know like what it is, what the, what the real deal is, what really happened that night. And not that not that you know, like it would. I knew it would have took a long shot for me to beat him. I knew I just had to get lucky and knock him out. You know, which which I could have, mm -hmm. but. At the weigh-in the day before, I say to his people because his people put on the fight. They had their judges. Their 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 whole thing was was run by Jones's camp. Mm. So I asked them. Um, I said, "Hey, can you tell me what time we're going to be fighting?" He said, "I want. I want. I have a coffee before a fight. You know what I mean." I, I I take like like these little like I take vitamins that give you energy. And I forgot I forget what the name of them were. Now I even forgot. The, but but anyways, I used to take the pills, take take the coffee, and I do it about an hour before the fight. So that's why I asked them. I asked them, oh yeah. Vinny, we'll, we'll be fighting, or the fight will go later than 9.30. I said, you definitely, you definitely be fighting right around 9.30. They, they tell me. That's what they tell me. So I'm in the back, and now I'm getting all jacked up. I'm ready to go, 9 o'clock, 9.30. Now, now, you know, nobody's coming in. 10.30, nobody's coming in. 11.30, 12.15, my father wakes me up on on on, on, on a uh, um, on a massage table. 
My dad wakes me up. Goes, come on, champ. We gotta go fight. Let's go. Let's go. I was like, oh my god, I'm fucking dead. I'm dead. Said, this guy's gonna kill me. I said, let me, let me just, let me just see if I can just throw a bomb and knock him out. And, and, no. That Wait happen. a minute. Wait a minute. I, so I, I fought him. I fought him. They told me I would fight him no later than 10 o'clock. My father came in the back, wakes me up at a little after midnight. I fought I fought him at like 12. I think I fought him at like, like I knew at the time, like exactly. I fought him at like 12.10 or 12 11 or 12, 12. Like at, at the time, I knew, like I knew it, you know. I knew it because it, it fucking ruined me. Not that I would have beat him, but but he would have never stopped me. No, no one stopped me. And that's a that's a that's a big that's a big thing. If you can stop the Vinny Paz, you you that's that's a major. You you you're doing something right. Wait a minute. Does this to the audience? Does this story sound familiar about the fight not starting on time? Someone else was just on here. Trick, didn't somebody just say the same thing not too long ago at Fort Roy? Uh, remember we had Charles Brewer on? Well, not so much Charles Brewer, but we had uh, Montel Griffin on. Didn't Montel, Montel say the same thing? Yeah, every time we have a guest on here to the fight Roy, it's always someone with Roy doing Told something. One thousand percent. Roy, Roy, Roy always made something. Roy, Roy was the only fighter that I ever fought. Roy made everything go his way, made everything like the way in the times, like what, what, what was going to go down, who was going to be the referees, who's going to be the judges. Roy always had an upper hand on everybody he fought. He really did. I think mm -hmm. Montel, it was Montel. It was, that was it Montel was, Griffin. It was Montel Griffin. He said the exact same thing you said. Wow, that was like about two weeks ago, right? Did he said this because you're telling the story? Montel said the exact same thing. Wow, he said they were supposed to come out and fight at a certain time, they come out to hours later. He said the exact same thing you said. He said, wow. they, he said they wouldn't let him. Now, I spoke to Montel on the phone, he didn't say this when we had him on the show, but he said they wouldn't let him warm up in the dressing room. He had to go out there cold. That's why Roy called him cold. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, Roy, 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 Roy was the baddest motherfucker alive at the time. He he was amazing, but but man, he 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 made everything go in his favor all the time. Yo, this dude Roy. Well, here it is, facts. Two different right. fighters saying the right. same thing. I'm listening to him. I'm like I heard this before. Yep. I just heard this. Montel just he just told the same story. Wow. <laughs> oh, oh you know what else too? Virgil Hill. We had Virgil on. Oh yeah. Yep. What Virgil said. Yeah, Virgil said the same thing. Pretty much. Wow. Holy cow. So wow. you gotta take yeah, a nap we... before you fight Roy. Roy, Roy, was, Roy was unbelievable. It was unbelievable. And and like you you guys are saying, he made everything go in his favor. He made everything go to, to his to his liking. Like he, they took the judges in, you know, they, they took like crazy, 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 crazy. But but wow. and on top of it all, the motherfucker could fight his ass off. He was like the greatest thing next to Sugar Ray Robinson at the time. Mm. He was unbelievable. Yeah. Holy cow. We got three fighters saying the same thing. Wow. And um, Roy was already amazing. It was already amazing. Yeah. Never, but never when he, covered his tracks, he, he made sure he covered his tracks real good. <laughs> Remember Jurov said he wouldn't fight him. Remember Jurov? We had Jurov on. Oh yeah, that's right. So Gerald, he damn sure did say that. He said, "Yeah, yep, yeah, yeah." Gerald would have been a handful for him because <laughs> Gerald would have kept coming. Gerald still hey, won't I smoke never, right now with everybody. I never <laughs> seen that guy fight. You ever seen Vasily Gerald? Um, no, he had fight in the year with James him. Tony. It, it, he he didn't beat James Tony. No, 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 no. no, no. But that was a yeah, that was a yeah, slugfest, yeah. though. James Tony's a bad motherfucker. 
Yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah. James, all time great, man. Yeah, yeah. You, you, can't, he, he you, have, you, you have to really understand that shoulder roll. Don't try and do it in the gym if you don't know what you're doing. Trust me, don't do oh, it. One thousand percent. Yeah, he mm -hmm. was a bad dude. Hey, Vinny, what would you say? What would you say was your best punch in your prime? Oh, my overhand right. The the punch that I knocked out Melvin Paul with. And Melvin Paul could fight if you guys remember him. And Rosenblatt. You got Rosenblatt with the same punch. Rosenblatt, oh yeah, same punch. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Over the top. I, I would like I would like to hit him and Haugen with it again today. <laughs> <laughs> hey, Vinny, you beat you beat so many so many world champions in the day. You fought so many world current or former world champions. I mean, I, I don't even know how many there are. I started counting them. I I, I got lost when I got over ten, bro. But but that's yeah. amazing. You fought more, more more champions than most of these guys have had fights today. And you've you've beaten Roberto Duran twice. I mean, you you've been nominated to the Hall of Fame this year, bro. That's a that's a big thing. Now 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 how how, how do you get up for fighting Roberto Duran, man? And in, in your career was that, was that a huge fight or what, bro? You know, I I like really didn't want to fight him. You know, because he was he was like he was one of my heroes. I I I just love I love Cassius Clay. Like, I just saw him when I was five years old, and that was it. I wanted to be that man. I wanted to be. He was. He was. He was a pretty boy. He. He was. He was. He was. He was just great. He was great. Great. Great boxer. Great fighter. Never stayed down. You know, no one knocked him out. And, but uh, you know, life goes on. It and it's funny. It, you know, you want to know what's funny? I. I I say, um, I say, I say he was like a pretty boy and why I say that I didn't an event, a charity event in, um, in, uh, uh, where the hell was this? Maybe, uh, geez, where the fuck was it? maybe, maybe, maybe Chicago, some, somewhere, but, Somewhere not near Rhode Island, and that um, a fact. But I mean, and everybody was there, like everybody. Muhammad Ali was the. It was Muhammad Ali's charity fundraiser. So Ali was there, um, you know, greeting people, and, and then they called all the celebrities up into the ring, and Muhammad would meet each each guy. I mean, everyone was there, like. Like the greats, like 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 Wayne Gretzky was there. Um, just just like like everybody, like like on on that scale of of people, like everyone was there. And so when they called me up into the ring, uh, Muhammad greeted everybody and thanked them for coming and whatever he said. So when he, when he, when when I went up into the ring, I shake his hand. I said, "Oh man!" I said, "Muhammad, this is this is so great." I said, "You're the best." I said, "I I, I said I loved you as a kid. I loved you. I, I mean, the only reason why I'm fighting is because because of you." And I had a tuxedo on and stuff, and looking good. I'm tanned up and everything. So <laughs> Muhammad says he grabs he. I'm holding hands with him. And and he grabs, he pulls me in, and he whispers in my ear. He goes, "Pretty boy." <laughs> so I started, I started cracking up. I said, "Listen, I said, Muhammad, I told you I want to be you. I want to be you." I said, "That's why I'm a pretty boy." <laughs> and I said, "But I'm tough as nails, just like you were." And and he started he he, la he laughed he laughed a little bit but that's when he was starting to fail if you guys remember yeah yeah you know he got real slow at the end yeah yeah, yeah. that's why yeah. that's why I, to be honest with you I don't want to live long because of of that guy like I, you know I don't want to go out like my hero did you know he, he you know I, I I hated the way he went out. You know, like like mm. people people remember him like that, and not like not like beating the shit out of Joe Frazier, not mm. not like fighting. You know, 
like beasts in the ring. Ken Norton, you know, people remember him as being an old guy that just bumbling around. You know, I I hate that. Mm. You know, I, I'm I'm not sticking around for that. He's that that's that's one thing. Yeah, yeah, he um, yeah, yeah. People people remember him now, like. Like from that aspect, and uh, one thousand percent, yeah. They, they don't, they don't recall, um, what he used to do, what he meant to the world, the impact, why we we refer to him as the greatest. Yeah. Um, I totally understand that, you know. Um, but if you know the the wonderful thing about the internet is, um, you can always Google it and read up on him, and you can see video of um him and his prime. Yeah. Yeah. And, uh, yeah. Yeah, it's 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 a wonderful thing. Uh, yeah, the, the it, brother, is, it is so cool. Yeah, yeah. The brother uh, in the chat, Slugger Sam, he said, "I want to ask, Vinny, you training during that really bad injury is pure bravery." My question is, what was going through your mind at the time? Were you scared that the injury would get worse? <laughs> yeah, you know, I didn't I didn't tell nobody back then so. I was scared shit. Are you kidding me? I was scared shitless. <laughs> 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 Fuck, I was all like, tough guy, I'm coming back. No matter, nothing going to keep me down. I'm coming back no matter what. This is what I want to do. I'm fighting. And then, and, and then I'd go home at night. I'd look in the mirror and go, you're a fucking douchebag. You're an <laughs> idiot. You're a moron. Look at you. What are you doing? Why are you doing this? Like literally, I used to have fights with myself every night. How nuts yeah. is that? Hey, what? Vinny, you remember when you made your comeback after after the, the the broken neck? You went to the Rocky Point Pavilion. You took on three dudes. Yo, you offered a thousand dollars for anybody to knock you on your ass, bro. I was oh sitting up there. Oh my that god! Day. Wow, you you got a great <laughs> memory. Oh my god! Yeah, what was that? That was wow. the Rocky Point Pavilion, my brother. Yes, oh my god, that's crazy. Wow. I knew that would get a smile out of you, bro. Oh my god, yes. Wow. Hey, salute Goomba. <laughs> salute to uh Diana Branch, my sis, must love in that super chat. She said, Vinny, how do you feel about these kids today and how they're moving? Uh, is social media a plus or not? Definitely not. Definitely not. When 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 social media takes your mind off at, at everything and anything, you know, if you want to be a superstar, forget social media. You know, I like when I when social media came out, I was I was a world champion. I was I was I was kicking ass. I was like I was like I was like in my in my thirties. I think. L I was in my 30s. I was just macking with chicks up. They would like, like it, they would be mad chicks at my in my fucking door in my gym at my house. It was so crazy. And no, it's not a good thing for for a boxer. It's not a good thing. It's mm. you know, it's great if you're a stud. You got a ton of money, and you know, you you, you want to bang chicks. It's it's all it's awesome for that. But nah, not good. Not good for fighters at all. Mm. Yeah, it's one of those things, you know, gift and a curse. Gift yeah. and a curse, man. Wicked. It's like, you know. Wicked. Yeah. yeah. Hey, Vin, I got a question. Uh, are, you, are you aware that there's a, a rapper named Vinny Paz named himself after you? Absolutely. Oh, I heard of that. Yeah. Yeah, he's a good yeah. friend. Of yeah, good friend of mine. He He's really good, too. Okay. I never listened to him, man. So I heard about him. The motherfucker can jam. Like he 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 rocks it out. He's really good. There's a cat. There's a cat out here in Brooklyn. He calls himself Rock Marciano. Oh, really? Yeah. There's a, there's a oh, wow. rapper called Rock Marciano. He's from Brooklyn. Wow! Wow! Yeah. And see, when when the Vinny Paz dude called me, he said, "Vinny, I'm a big fan. You know, I I want to, you know." Use your name, you know that I rap by. I'm a, I'm a, I'm a great rapper. I said, all right, that, that's cool. I said, yeah, man, that's that's cool. Do it. I said, but I'll tell you what, I spell my name with a Y, 
you spell you spell your name with an IE. You spell Vinny with an IE. I'll spell it with a Y, and we're cool. And and that's what he did. Excellent. Nice. See how, see how easy business works. I love it. Yep. Yeah. Salute to my, salute to my big uncle Dre Finders. He said, "Pass has so much energy. You would have thought he was on crack." And that's a lot of energy. That's a yeah. lot of energy. Yeah. That's a lot of yeah. Energy. No, salute I to- never, I never didn't, I never did no drugs. I never did. No <laughs> drug free. No the, only, the only thing I did was testosterone. <laughs> and and I would tell after the doctors would say, "Well, Vinny." Your testosterone is really high. I said, no, I eat, I eat steaks all the time. That's why. <laughs> yeah. I have lunch with Mighty Mike every day, bro. Oh, shit. <laughs> How is, is, is he still alive? Bro, I, I don't know, bro. I, I, I wouldn't put anything past that dog. Yeah, I, I, he's, a, he's a weird cat, man. Weird cat. Um, yeah, I... I I don't, I don't know what he's doing. Like, I haven't talked to him in, God, maybe. That's, a, that, that's maybe, generations ago, bro. Maybe 15 years ago, maybe. Yeah. Yeah, yeah I haven't talked to him in so long. Oh, my God. <laughs> Mike Quinn, every once in a while, his name pops up, though. Oh, he was a monster, no doubt about it, bro. Yeah. Oh, yeah, yeah. Yeah, he was. And he was, he was. He was something, something wasn't right with the kid. You know, he had something was a little like psycho with him. Like, like I'm, I'm, I'm psycho, but I make it work for me. He was just <laughs> psycho. Yeah. Crazy, crazy. Yeah. Salute to uh, Slugger Sam. He said, Drew, thanks for having my question answered, fam. But where my wrench? I'm a long time supporter. I got you, fam. I got you. Much love and appreciation. <laughs> uh, let me go. Oh, cry. <laughs> Salute Crowd. Yeah. He said, Vinny, did you ever used to run into Tony Marshall back in the day out of Albany, New York? Tony Marshall, he was a fighter. Yeah. That's he, that's who he's talking. I believe that's who he's talking about. Yeah, he had a birthday yeah. a few days ago. I got him on. I talked to him on Facebook. Oh, no way. How's he doing? He's doing good. He's uh, training good. fighters up in Albany. He's still in Albany. Oh, uh, good. Tell him I said hello. Okay, yeah, I'll do that. Yeah, that'd be really cool. Yeah, he was he was a bad dude at one time. Hey, hey Vinny, dresser. another. Yeah. Hey, <laughs> hey Vinny, another quick question for you. Uh, unfortunately, I'm gonna have to roll up out of here, Drew, man. But uh, I just wanted to ask another thing for Vinny. You know, uh, Vinny, I'm a strength and conditioning coach. It's what I do for a living, and a lot of times I like fighters to talk about the training aspect of of being a boxer and the transition. Uh, specifically, you know, from going from your 20s into your 30s into your late 30s and how your body changes and yeah. how you had to change eating and training. Let the yeah. people know what that transition was like, because it's something that we don't hear about a lot in the public. That's a great question. Yeah. Um, as I got older, I had to I had to I had to eat a little differently because my body wouldn't 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 cooperate w- with with my body um, had to eat a little differently you know I went I went to high protein mm-hmm. at the end of my career um, and, you know it's just it's just different when when you're when you're 29, young dumb full of cum you you, <laughs> you go through walls. <laughs> You can run through brick brick buildings. I used to run through fucking brick buildings. But then when you get in your 30s, nah. See, I think 33 was my favorite year. It was my last great year of fighting. I um I fought Glenwood Brown. I, I won a world title. Um yeah, that was my that was my last great year when I was 33 years old. And then I I fought. Like I didn't, I didn't want to do this. I didn't dream of doing this. I didn't think of doing this at all. But I wanted to get to fifty wins, so that's why I, 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 I still boxed until I was forty. Because mm. I would have never, ever thought I would have boxed till forty years old. And um, 
you know, just, you know, you're just not the same, you know, it's just, it's yeah. just not the same. See, like, like I fought Roberto Duran, you know, I beat him, but of course I beat him. You know, you know, the motherfucker was 40 years old. You know, you shouldn't be boxing when you're 40 years old. My, my last fight I fought, I fought a kid who was going for his, he was going for his 40th win. I was going for my 50th win. He was um he was 29 years old, so I had a hard time beating him. But but I beat his ass in the end. I got him in the in the, in the late rounds, which is amazing. You know it's, that's balls. That's that all that is is just balls to the wall. And um you know I did I got lucky. I could fight. You know I don't, why I don't even know. But you know I I just could fight. But at the at the end, it's just not the same. When I was going for my 50th win, I was in the ring with this kid. His name was Taka Pudwell. He had he was he had uh, he had 39 wins and uh, four four losses, I think. And he was going for his 40th win. So I'm in there and I and I'm I'm thinking to myself, you motherfucker. I said <laughs> 10 years ago, I would have fucking wiped your ass out. I would have fucking knocked you the fuck out in two rounds, and then I and then and then I said, "Okay, shut up, Paz, man," because that's what Roberto Duran was saying about you. So no. <laughs> fight the kid, beat his ass, and get out of here. And mm. and I got lucky to beat to beat him because he was a tough kid. I dropped him. I dropped him at the, the, the in I think the last eight round, ninth round. Yeah, so wow. it was pretty cool. Yeah, I but, find but it in, it's, not, it's not the same when you get older. When you get in your 40s, when you get in your late 30s, forget it. Done. Your body's I different. I find it interesting you, you mentioned 33 because I feel about the same. I feel like when I was about 32, 33, I was at the pinnacle. And Absolutely. Then suddenly, yeah. And then suddenly when I get to like 35, 36, it's, that's when you start to feel that drop. Where you're Absolutely. Like, yeah. I can't train two times a day anymore. I can't do the 10-mile runs anymore. <sighs> Absolutely. My back, oh my, my god. Back hurts. Yeah. My back hurts. My back hurts. My neck hurts. My shoulder hurts. Yeah. Yeah. If I can make an observation, yeah. Vinny, I think your problem is you bring the best out of everybody you fight, man. You know, they, they can that. be dogs, but then yeah. when they go in the ring with you, bro, uh they, it, it seems like they're they are they are on top of their game, bro. What's what's up with that? Yeah. You are so right. And and it's it's it, and like when I was fighting Hector Camacho, I was like, I was, I was talking to myself and going, "You're such a fucking idiot. You made this motherfucker train like crazy." <laughs> yeah. I'm, you know, I'm talking to myself in the ring while I'm fighting him. I'm saying, "Paz, man, you douchebag. You made this fucking, <laughs> you this fucking. He, this guy don't train for nobody. I, 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 I like, I would have wiped him out if he was like, like, training for some normal guy." But because right. it was me, because I was talking shit before the fight, <laughs> that motherfucker got jacked. I, I I couldn't hit him. I couldn't hit him, Camacho. I couldn't. I, I I hardly hit him. He he was you know he was so elusive you know and then left handed, fast as lightning. That cat was special, man. He was I never special. saw anybody throw tampacks at anybody at a freaking press conference, bro. <laughs> <laughs> oh my god! Yeah. <laughs> Whoa. That, that's a good one. Man, salute, salute, <laughs> yeah, salute to my mom. Dre Fine, she said, I'm 58 and I've never seen Paz in a boring fight. That's true. That's 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 damn true. Um yeah. <laughs> brother Jelly Bean, he wanna know what's the hardest thing about separating boxing life from life outside of the ring? How do you separate the two? That's a good question. Mm -hmm. That's a good question. I, I myself, I, um, I, I would get, I would get wild at times, party out, you know, fucking gamble like a crack addict, you know, like go with so many chicks, nuts, like crazy, crazy. And, but the one thing that I always did and that never stopped and never it just, it just got, it got lit. It got a little bit less time before the fight. Like I would, I would, um, 
I would train my ass off and I wouldn't like, I wouldn't be around girls. I wouldn't, I wouldn't be around clubs, nightclubs. I would stay out. In, in, in the older I got, the, the less time I got, like I still, I still did, I did those things to save myself. To, to to get up for a fight, I, I worked hard and and didn't drink, didn't do anything, you know, you know, just got up and ran and worked and 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 did my thing, and and it got like it used to be two months out, like two months out, I wouldn't do nothing, even even three months when I first started, three months, and then and then as I got older, it, it got down to about. Three weeks, <laughs> three weeks, <laughs> and, and like I wouldn't, I wouldn't like go with chicks. Like I, I wouldn't, I wouldn't drink. But that, as I got older, that started getting less and less time to the fight. Like when I, when I was in my in my twenties, I, I wouldn't do anything for three months but train for a fight and go nuts, ballistic, and 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 not. Not, not go with chicks. Not, not do anything, you know, wrong. And the older I got, the less that that went down. They finally ended up being about three weeks, two weeks, and not good. Wow. I don't know if that answers your question, but no, 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 no. I, I, I totally understand. <clears throat> yeah, sometimes, yeah. sometimes, and you see this with athletes a lot. Um, they they would be like Vinny Paz, how your mom and dad know you, how your family knows you, how your girlfriend knows you, and then there's Vinny yeah. Paz, how we yeah. know and support and appreciate you. And sometimes it can get kind of difficult <clears throat> to uh, uh, turn it off, as you can say. One thousand percent. You know, yeah, one thousand percent. You got to You got to you got to remember who you are. We're calling the same name. Yeah. But you got to remember who, who you are on the inside. So I, I totally get it. And a lot of pro athletes, they go through that, that. Some of them, not all of them. A lot of them go through that, that, that point in their life, you know, where it's like, okay, who am I? You know, yeah. um, the, the, am I, am I the guy that the crowd loves or, yeah. or am I, the, am I the person that my parents raised? Right. And great, great comment. Great comment. Yeah, that's awesome. Yeah. You know, and, 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 and um, sometimes it takes somebody that knows you um, that has to remind you, you know, look, maybe you're doing too much. You know, you're not talking to one of these guys that want to run around and get your autograph and take some of your money. You're talking to a guy that doesn't need your money, that loves you from the heart, that grew up with you or that yeah. knows you personally. You know, they, it yeah. takes that person to slow you down before you speed up. So I've, so, I've been around, so cool. yeah. I've been around famous people, and I wasn't the person to tell them you'll pump your brakes. But I've been around their people that knew them, that know their government name. That says, "Yo, look, pump your brakes, man. You're doing too much." So sometimes you need that 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 person in your ear to uh, let you know when you got to get back to reality before reality bites you in the ass. Wow. You know I mean? Yeah. It's so so true. Oh my God. Yeah. Yeah, so you know, I mean, it's it's tough, man. I've seen it. It's tough. It's very, very tough, man. But you know, you've, been, you've, been, the, you've been in some sports. You've been you've been you've been high up in 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 a certain sport. Am I right or am I wrong? No, you're right. I've I've been around. I've seen some things. You know, I'm I'm yeah. I'm, I'm, I'm I'm just a guy. But what's your, what's uh, your sport? Around. What do you like? What, what no, do you well, like? I've, you doing? Um, I've been um I haven't boxed professionally. I've been in and out of the gym since I was like seven to eight years old. Um, there was a, a, a boxing club in uh, Roberto Clemente State Park in the Bronx, and the big dog in there was Mitch Green. Oh and my God! He, yeah, yeah. yeah. He, yeah. He, he was a bad motherfucker in his day. Oh man, Mitch, man, I, I was a I was a little kid back then, so Mitch looked about nine feet tall to me. Mitch looked, absolutely. And um, yeah. you know, people people clown him that don't know he's oh he's a guy that Mike Tyson punched in the face and his eye was swollen for twelve months. No, forget that. Absolutely, Mitch, yeah. Mitch was a badass. Mitch the was badass. A badass, and he was a street badass. Dude. 
And everything yes, he said he about was. Mike Tyson, yeah. he wasn't afraid of Mike Tyson. What I tell people all the yeah. time is that when they fought in the ring, this was a young, hungry. Uh, I don't think Mike was even 25 years old when they fought. I might be wrong what? about that, but Mike did oh, not. No, I think out. you're right. Yeah, I think you're right. Yeah. Mike, Mike, he did enough to win the fight, but he didn't knock Mitch out. Imagine. Mitch out. And, yeah, and, that's and, when he was knocking out everybody. He was knocking out everybody, and he couldn't get Mitch. Yeah. You know, and you know, Mitch had his struggle with uh, uh um substance abuse, he had a problem. Yeah, uh, but I like to remember him how I used to see him. And he was a badass in that gym, he used to beat people up. Mitch um, was a bad motherfucker. Oh, yeah. yeah. Yeah, and Mitch, um, and like I miss those gyms, man. I mean, I don't even understand how people didn't get more sick in those gyms, man. Because I remember putting on headgear that was all sweaty. Isn't and funky. it crazy? <laughs> you know what? I think of that too. That's yeah. fucking nuts. It was so oh my how God. many times? How many times when it was your time to spar and the person take the headgear off of himself and put it on you and it's all the sweat on your face? How do 1, we not get sick? Percent. One thousand percent. Oh my god! <laughs> totally. Going in your mouth. I mean, it, nothing was sanitary back yeah. then. You have the spit buckets with the lemon in it. It was crazy, yep. man. You it know, was you get really cut, crazy. You, you, you get cut, you throw some duct tape on it, you keep going. <laughs> totally. I mean, in, in the smell of a, of a real gym. I mean, mm. I, it, it yep. sounds repulsive and disgusting, but I miss it. Yeah, miss totally. It. And, and, yeah. And, and, and for those of you that love the sport, for those that love yeah. the sport and has been around it, you understand what I'm talking about. So I've been yeah. around guys <laughs> locally that was supposed to do big things that didn't really pan out. Like I said, I was around Mitch Green. Yeah. Um, Roberto Clemente yeah. had some nice tournaments back then. Um, never went to the Golden Gloves, but I've helped people train. I've sparred dozens of rounds. So I know my way around the, yeah, uh, around the ring. See, I know, I know you know what you're talking about when you tell me that. I know, I know like I can tell by the way you're talking, you're involved. In some some type of sport, whether it be boxing or baseball, or basketball, football, you're involved with something at a high end level, you know. And, and knowing knowing what it's, what it takes to train, to to be disciplined, to you know, like as stupid as and little as e eating right, you know. Yeah. Girls, they, they just you you know what you're talking about. Yeah, yeah, I do. It, it's it takes a lot of discipline, man. It takes yeah. a lot of discipline when you when you have the world yeah. at your feet and you can literally at that yeah. point in time you can have anything you want. It yep. takes discipline yep. to say you know what no thank you because yep. this will be this will turn into something bad and that's one of the things that Mike Tyson needed when he was coming along. That was mm. something that he needed man because he what he had was a bunch of enablers around him. One thousand percent, yeah. He had a bunch of enablers, man. But that that one, man, one thousand. Yeah. Yeah. I'm, I'm looking at the chat right now. They're talking about sweaty sparring gloves. Yeah, man. Those that smell is awful. Totally. <laughs> smell yeah. is awful. So you 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 save you save money to buy your own gloves because if you show up to the gym, oh hey coach, I forgot my gloves. Here you go. You're like, yeah. oh, oh. yeah. And you, you know how you put your hands in it and it's it, in in the it's sweat is fresh. Yeah, it's like you're gripping a sponge, just like ooh. Oh, man. Yeah. but those are the good old days. Gyms with no air condition. Those were the good mm. old days. Good old days like, man. Ain't nothing like that today. <laughs> That's how yeah, boys' man. gym is in Vegas, man. I went in there, man. There's no air conditioning, and it's hot. Oh God! You know, Floyd. Floyd has a throwback attitude, and that's that's yeah. that's one of the things I've given to him. He has a Absolutely. throwback attitude. One thousand percent. Yeah, and, and, and that's one thing that what we're discussing is how he came up. So he yep. doesn't know any other way. Yeah. So you know that that's one thing I give him. That 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 kid was I call him a kid. We were almost the same age, but he's never yep. out of shape, and he was one of the guys that understood. You know what got me here is my discipline. Yeah, so he maintained yeah. it, and I'm just talking about in the ring. I'm not talking about the antics outside the ring. Yeah, um, Floyd was a badass. You know, I mean, yeah. the simple, the simple, the fact of the matter is that motherfucker could you could throw a bag of rice at him and not hit him, not hit him. Yeah, yeah he was unbelievable. Mm. Yeah, complete student of the game, man. Student yeah, of the absolutely. game. Yeah, absolutely, absolutely. You know, he was unbelievable. He was 
He was born for it, man. Just he was, he was born for it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. One thousand. Right, I, I know you got a road, Devon. Yes, sir. Road, yes, sir. I know how they can find you, brother. Yeah, I'll drop the link in the chat, man. And a lot of you, uh, a lot of you guys already know me and follow me on my channel. I appreciate you. If you are just uh, learning about me, I appreciate you dropping by and being part of the Divine Sense Boxing family as well. And uh, huge, huge honor to be on the panel here with 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 the champ, five time world champ, Vinny Paz, man. Um, I'm blessed to have a conversation with you, sir. And uh, stay safe and. Be, can continue to be strong and take care of your family out there. And uh, remember, guys, life is precious. Every moment in life is precious. So keep smiling and, and keep chugging along and enjoy life. Awesome, Indeed. brother. It said couldn't be said any better. Yes, sir. That's our, that's our brother, Divine Sense. Peace Amen. and love, guys. I, I, you, it was my pleasure being on with you. No doubt, Vinny. Um, and um, listen, man, anytime... Before a big fight, you know, um, I love to have you back, man. We always have guests on here, you know. Um, I'm gonna try and get uh Freddie Pendleton on here next week. Oh right, shit! Yeah. No way! Tell Freddie I said hello. Oh my god! Yeah, absolutely, Freddie. <laughs> Freddie's a good dude, man. I, I talk. Freddie, to Freddie is often. a bad motherfucker. Yeah, man. Everybody say that, man. I'm telling you, he's underrated, man. He was oh a man, bad that's what I wanted to ask you. That's what I wanted to ask you. What? 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 Um, at any point, were you ever approached? And, and this is just you know, um, um, throwing throwing stuff at the wind. Um, at any point, were you ever approached about a Phyllis Trinidad fight? Yeah, yeah. I wanted I wanted to fight him bad, and it's so it's so funny you say that. That's so crazy you say that about. About three months ago, I was at a um, I was at a, an affair somewhere, Atlantic. I think Atlantic City, and um, and Felix was there. Oh my God, he fucking hugged me, he fucking told me he loves me. He was the nicest fucking guy I've ever met, like, like sweetheart, sweetheart, and he was a badass. That dude. Yeah, right? there was a lot of um, there was a lot of uh, alleged alleged things with him in reference to um, you know how he wrapped his hands and things like that. Did you hear anything oh, about see, that? That, that? That I don't know nothing about. No, no, hmm. I, that I don't know. Yeah, I know. Um, I know someone that that spoke to Fernando Vargas about that, and Fernando was so aggravated with that. Wow. Um, he was William like, Joppy. Oh, yeah, William Joppy. Joppy as well. So, Joppy, yeah, we had Joppy on here like a year ago. And yeah. they, they were so pissed, like, yo, like, if we see Felix right now, it's on site. Because they, they're oh, like, yo, really? we know he did. Yeah, they're like, yo, we know he did something to his gloves. And when oh, I went back wow. and looked wow. at those, um, and when I went back and I looked at those, um, those knockouts, they had, like, when you get caught clean, when someone gets caught clean, you go to sleep, you wake up, you hear the ref saying eight, and you can't make it, right? When they got One, hit, 1, they, weren't, they weren't, like, sleeping. They got hit, and they were like, oh, shit, what the hell was that? And they were awake, but it was like, what the hell was that? William yeah. Joppy told us that after he got dropped, he don't remember anything else after that. I said, "Well, you know, you you, you got stopped, wow. but I don't think what what did he say, Trick? He don't remember anything past round two, and the fight got stopped like what the six or seven? Yeah, he don't remember anything. He don't remember yeah. anything. Wow. And, and Fernando Vargas said the same thing. He don't remember anything. He was fighting off of wow. pure instinct. Wow. And, and then and then leading up to the Bernard Hopkins fight, that was when uh, Brother Nas caught him." In the garden, trying to manipulate his uh his hand wraps. His hands are already wrapped. And remember, they said that wrapped, um right. they're already wrapped. So, Vin, I got a question: Have you ever fought a fighter, and your um team went in the locker room and their hands are already wrapped? I mean, I'm glove with gloves on. I'm sorry, wrapped with gloves on. Oh my God, I'm gonna, I'm going to tell you a, a true story, a good one, real fast, oh. real easy. Like I went over to London to fight one time. Harold Graham. And, in, in Harold fucking Graham, 
So, so yeah. So, so that motherfucker, he's all godly and shit. Like he's got, he's like, he comes with a cross on. He's got a big, he's got a big cross on his neck. He's all like, like, like religious and shit. And I'm, I'm like going, this guy's like really overboard with this religion shit, but okay, whatever. Um, so I step in the ring with him. No, no, I think I'm going to beat him and, and no big deal. I'm going to just fucking fly back home. You know, you know, no big deal. So I get in the ring with him. Now this guy, like, like, like in, 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 press conferences before in and before he's acting like he's like like he's acting like Jesus Christ and and like he does no harm he, he's he's a good guy I'm the fucking wild guy and so we start we, we the fight bell rings round one he hits me with a fucking jab on the top of my head and I'm going what the fuck I said, I said, nah, nah. I said, don't come on, warm up, Paz, man. Warm up, move, 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 move. You, you won't feel it. Boom! He hits me with another shot, like, like, like maybe a, a minute, two minutes later, like on the face with the front of his glove. I'm going, what the fuck? Mm. And every time I was getting hit, it like it, it, it was like it was like the glove was like like rocks. Like there were rocks in in the in the in the leather, like right 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 behind the leather. I I felt it. So so now I'm getting busted up, you know, which which I always do anyways, you know, because you know I'm I'm, I'm because I'm white and and my skin is is you know not hard and, and strong, but that don't make that that don't matter to me no matter what, right? It, you know that that don't matter. But now this motherfucker, like when 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 I tell you, I've I've never been hit like that in my life, and I've been I've been fighting since I was five years old. I fought heavyweights. I fought badass motherfuckers. I fought guys with, with small gloves, but I never felt anything like it. And see, we did not go to his locker room because I said, I don't need to go to his fucking locker room. I, I, whatever, whatever. It don't matter. I'm, I'm going to beat his ass and it don't matter. So wow. I'm getting I'm getting popped by this guy. And, and, and it did not did not even dawn on me because I just don't think anybody would do that, would have the balls to fucking do that. When I tell you they took all the fucking padding out of their gloves. Oh, wow. He, he took, he didn't take, he didn't take 70%. He took 99% of the fucking, I, every time I got hit in the fucking face, it like, it, it like, I felt like I was getting hit with rocks. Like I, I really felt, so I didn't say nothing. You know, I did, I lost a fight. I was fucking pissed at myself. I was I was mad because I I didn't win the fight. I didn't I didn't I was I wasn't in the fight. I and I, I didn't wreck him. I thought I was gonna wreck him, destroy him, knock him out. So I was I was sad and, and everything. And then after I'm thinking there was there was there was a, a fight on TV here in in America, and um, and and after the fight, the guy the guy um found out that they had no I can't remember who it was it was a big name too but they found out that the guy had no gloves no no padding in the gloves, and as soon as he said that I went. Oh my God, that motherfucker, Harold Graham, that motherfucker, that dirty motherfucker. He <laughs> took all the padding out of his fucking gloves. Like, that's never happened to me in my life. Like, and, and after the fight, my fuck, my face was, was bruised all, all up, like lumps. And, and, I'm, and that, that's, that's like, I've never had it to that extent where, where, where I got, Busted up that bad, and and they were like 
like like marks on me. Like I never my like I never had bumps on my head, like on my forehead. I never had that. So I'm going, wow, that motherfucker took the fucking wrappings out of his fucking goddamn gloves. And see, we didn't even go over because I was like, nay. They came in and they said, Vinny, you want to go? He's taping up right now. I said, don't worry about it. You know, no big deal. And and see, see though, how things happen, no? Vinny, it was Henry Warden. Was it Henry Warden? Say that again? Was it the guy Henry Warden that exposed it? No, 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 ah, shit, I don't know who it was. I forget the name, but but I remember it was years after, years after, in my fight with with Harold Graham. Years after, and you know, it made made gave me a flashback to the night, the night that I fought him. You know, <laughs> then, you know so I didn't I didn't say nothing about it or do anything, you know. But 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 I know that's what he did. The fucking God fearing man. Oh the, wow! Does this sound yeah. familiar? Yeah, I I know, I know, I know, I like, know. Uh, yeah. Oh my God! So yeah, I do. As soon as I saw that that happened, and that that years later, years later, I went, oh, that motherfucker Harold Graham. Oh, he's so fucking religious, and there's. They they pull the pattern out of his gloves like crazy. Let me let me ask you a question, that Vinny. Just don't, that just don't happen to to you. That just don't happen to me. I boxed since I was five years old. I never had that feeling in my life. You know, getting hit in the face with, with rocks. Let, you me, know? let me ask you a question, Vinny. Do you have any faith in the in the commission that they would have caught that guy doing that? No, no, because I was in London. I went. I went to his. I went to his mm. fucking town. You know, I, I boxed against him because I thought I was gonna beat his ass, and and you know, it, it didn't happen. And yeah, but, you thought but, you were gonna beat his ass too. That's why he cheated. Uh, yeah. Yeah. Yep. 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 Oh, so I, I'll never forget that. Never. So, never so forget that. Since we're talking about cheating. Um. <laughs> well, here we go. Fuck it. Since we every did. time, every time. Yep, yeah, yep. Yeah, every time. You see, this, 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 every time. I always say, I always ask people, do they believe cheating's in, you know, is there cheating in boxing? I always ask people that. When I yeah. when I make oh, these yeah. quote unquote allegations that I have evidence to support in reference to Wilder and Fury. And I say, well, look at this. And they say, well, this can't happen. The commission was there. And here we have another professional saying that they got cheated. And I'm sure the commissions were all over the place. So oh, my God. Yeah, you know, you know, that's funny you say that. I met Dante Wilder twice. I, I, I fucking love him. I, I, lo I love that guy. I, I think I think he's 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 one of the he's one of the best people I've ever met. I loved him. Loved him. So, of course, I want to see him win. And in my mind. And I, I really don't even want to say this because I really love the WBC, and you know, they're 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 behind me. They they they're my friends. They're the only they're the only they are the only after the only boxing organization that does things for the fighters. That they're the only ones that that really help the fighters. Like they they're yeah. unbelievable. They're they're amazing. See. Uh, the, the father used to love Ali. You know, he used to take care of Ali. You know, um, Maurizio Suleiman, he's the fucking best. He's the best. The WBC rules. It's the, only, it's the only fucking belt I didn't win. But they're the nicest people to me out of all of them. You know, they're the only belt I didn't win. And um, wait, wait a minute. What would I get on this? Why did I get on the subject? <laughs> what was going on? No, you you was explaining, um, like you met Deontay. Oh yeah, guy. yeah. Okay, okay, okay. Yeah, yeah, yes. Okay, so so listen. So I meet Deontay. Fucking love him. Love, couldn't be a nicer guy. So, um, and of course he's a big Vinnie Paz fan. Uh, throw that in too. <laughs> so, <laughs> so, so this fucking Tyson Fury comes if. And, and, you know, he's real charismatic, he's all cool shit. He literally, 
literally says in the fucking paper out of his mouth. He said, "Dude, I'm I'm gonna I'm gonna I'm gonna do a ton of coke after after I I, I beat his ass and get strippers." And I'm like, "What? What the fuck is he kidding me? Talking like that?" So, like. At, at the second fight, he was jacked, jacked on fucking growth hormone, on fucking steroids, on fucking coke, cocaine. He was fucking whacked because there ain't no fucking way. You you get hit by Dante Wilder, you, you're you out, you're, you're out, game over. The motherfucker goes down, bangs his head, gets up at the count of eight and acts like nothing ever happened to him. Oh, my <laughs> Come on, really, really? Is everybody a fucking sucker and, and, and believes what just happened happened? Like really? Come on. Yeah, like like bad, bad, really bad. <laughs> and, and really bad. But see, I, I love the WBC and he's he's their champion and, and you know the WBC they're the best fucking people in the world to, and to me on top of it you know like none of the other organizations the, the WBA the IBF the the WBU the, the IBO like none of them fucking do anything so but but something something's going on with with uh with Tyson Fury you see in the in, in the last fight I don't think he did it as as much drugs, but I think <laughs> he did. I think he was like a little bit on fucking cocaine because <laughs> that, that shit makes you fucking numb as a fucking. Uh, like, I never tried cocaine. I never. I never tried it. I didn't try. I don't. I, like, I, I can't even smoke. I'd be better off if I smoked pot. Than if I drank, because I'm a dry drink. I love I love booze. I love it. I'm 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 probably an alcoholic, but anyway. No. So this guy, when when you take cocaine, I'll never forget this. As a kid, I was 15 years old, and I was at my dad's store. He, my father was was a was a dealer. He was a bookie. You know he. He bought stolen goods and used to sell them. He'd buy that. He'd have like perfume, jewelry, gold, like the best suits and and stuff. And, you know, my father's a real hustler. And um, just one one day, you know, of course he had problems in the store every now and then. You know, people be beefing and stuff. One day there was there was a, there was two guys that were fighting in the store. And, and I'm watching them go back and forth, back and forth. And then they go outside. And one guy goes and gets a fucking bat. A, a Louisville slugger. And he mm -hmm. runs with the guy. And, and he, he, he acts like he's going to hit him in the leg. But he hits him in the fucking head with the bat. With a Louisville slugger. He hit the dude in the fucking head. Like, I, I like go, oh my God. The guy's going to die. He, 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 he's, he's gonna like have brain damage for life. The fucking guy didn't move, blink, or or do anything, but he fucking just kept looking at the at the fucking guy that hit him with a bat. Mm. And 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 then and then he just he walked away, walked away, like like. So after I went dead, like, did you see that guy he got hit with a bat? And he just walked away. He said, God, I said, um, the guy hit him so hard. And he said, hey, champ. He said, that's what drugs, that's what you did, that's that's what drugs do to you, champ. And see that that like that dude, that dude was on was on he was doing coke. He was doing cocaine. They fucking I ain't gonna say no more, but boy, it makes me think of Tyson Fury. Man, listen, the fact that um, he's accepted over here, over the homegrown American champion, and he's put on his pedestal with his um, 
Do you guys do you guys know Dante? Did you ever have him on? Uh, the yeah, I, we we know him. Let's just say we know him. Uh, his camp is in the chat right now. Um, I've been around the camp. Uh, uh, Tay Jones in the champ. He's in the he's in the chat right now. I speak to Tay Jones religiously. He uh, I just put his his uh, his uh, his comment on the chat. He said I told y'all because he believes that um like the most of us that this guy was juiced to the gills, cocaine yep. included. I mean this this last fight, Deontay. Had to argue with him in uh uh in, in, in literally had to take him to arbitration and get this fight going. Then it was supposed to happen on the 24th of July, got postponed until October, just enough for him to cycle off of whatever he was on. And once yep. again, he got knocked on his ass and he got up. Yep. Now I'm never gonna let that go. Good. I know what I saw in the first fight, I know what I saw in the second fight, and it's unfortunate because I believe that um in the second fight. Number one, Deontay Wilder was drugged by trickery. And um, um, like you said, um, uh, Tyson Fury had a deflated glove in that fight, which caused significant damage in Deontay Wilder's head. Yep, 1,000%. Yeah, well, you know, I mean, and these are the things. But when we point it out and we look at these things and we, we point out the proof, people say that we're, uh, we're just sore losers. No, yeah, yeah, right. Fight. Yeah, yeah, and I know, I know, I know, no, but I know what you mean. Believe, please believe me. Um, yeah, it's it's just it's 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 a shame. Like n nobody can see it. He's really good. He's 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 really good. Like the the fucking guy, um, Tyson Fury. He's good. You know, he's he's smooth as a cat. He's he's very likable. You know. Yeah, he's he, you know, he, he's 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 real he's real smooth for that for that type of of work. Yeah, he pulls it off because um pulls it off. Yeah, that's just he, what he does. He pulls he, it off. I, I guess I guess the word that you know the, the safe word is charming. He's so charming. He fits right, right. in. Right. You know, um, but he, I've seen a thousand guys like him. And, and the fact of the matter is, if Deontay Wilder had his record as far as um, uh, uh, the trouble he's gotten into outside of the ring, Deontay Wilder probably wouldn't even be in boxing right now. Right. You know, the drug oh, use, the suspensions, up. the guy doesn't have a, a boxing license in his own country right now. So how is he celebrated over here? Go figure. But um, every yeah. time we get a pro on here, it seems that um, they lean towards what you're saying, well, even when the pros don't know and we have to point out, you know, look, this is what happened, da 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 You know, I always ask the same question. Is there cheating in boxing? Yes! Oh, God, You yeah. know, you just said you made a mistake by not sending someone from your camp over to your opponent's yeah. camp. Totally. And, this yep. guy, and this guy cheated. And he had rocks in the heat. Yep. All yeah, the padding removed yep. from his uh, a glove hitting you upside your head. Yep. As if this sport isn't already dangerous. Right, exactly. So you, <laughs> exactly. You, you will never yeah. make me respect. I gave him his credit after that third fight. Hurt me to do it. I gave it to him. You know what I mean? But that doesn't negate from what happened in the uh, uh, set, the first and the second fight. And by the way, there was no floppy glove in the third fight. No one's talking about that. Yep. No one's talking about that. But you know, that's what it is, man. But you know, you've been on. You've been on with us. For a good while, man, Vinny, I really appreciate you, brother. I really uh, that's awesome. You. you guys are awesome, man. I love you guys. You, yeah, you, I'd, be, I'd be hanging with you guys if you were in Rhode Island. <laughs> well, you know, I'll, I'll make my way up there. You know, I ain't far. Hey, I, I, hey, Vinny, I'm going to buy you a lot of pants at the Foxy when I see you, bro. Let's go. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, y'all close, man. Bruce, closing words, brother. You go ahead. Hey, man, yeah, I, I appreciate this, Drew. I appreciate you having me on here. My brother, Trick Nolte, and man, you know, the, the champ, Vinny Pazienza, bro, right down the street, Rhode Island, man. We definitely got to hook up. And, uh, you know, you guys, awesome. you guys know where to see me, man. I'm always on Mad Chad's show. On, on Friday at 6 o'clock, I do a nutrition show for us. For us over-the-hill guys that want to stay in shape, man, you can come over and see me at Fourth, fourth Quarter Talk. And, uh, man, it's been, it's been great, man. I want, I, I want a special wishes to my brother, Curtis Anderson, man. Get back up here with us. Uh, scrapbook boxing. Th thanks for letting me uh, go over on Stormy B Man's the other night and filling for you guys on Thursday night, man. So hey, man, nothing but peace and love for all you cats, man. Peace. Absolutely, That's cool. Man. Very good. Very good. Trick. Let them know how they can find you, Trick. 
Uh, trick underscore Nolte on uh, uh, Instagram, on Facebook, Anthony Carter. And uh, hey, Vinny, it was great having you on. Man, awesome. you, you something else, man. It was great. Everybody in the chat, man, this is, we got some gems today, man. Oh, we got a lot of gems. Some gems today. Got a yeah, lot of gems, you. man. And Drew, and always, man, thank you for letting me be on with you, Drew. Always, man. Always, brother. You already know what it is, man. Vinny, man, been, I've been, like I told you earlier, man, I've been following you for the better part of 25 years. That's no exaggeration. Wow, that's so cool. Man. Thank that's you. Man. That's nice. It's nice. No, you, 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 you might be a big reason why I won all those fights. And maybe <laughs> you didn't, maybe you didn't tune in. You didn't see him. I wouldn't have won. <laughs> <laughs> well, you know, um, I'm I a, swear, um, to, I swear to God, I really like feel like that when people tell me like what you're saying to me. I, I said, yeah. I said to just, just three, four days ago, some, some older guy. I, I saw out some in some store. He goes, "Oh my God, Vinny Paz!" He said, "I man, I watched all your fights. I cheered you on all the time. Oh my God, I'm so glad I'm meeting you." I said, "Oh my God, that's that's awesome." I said, "Yo, why I won all those fights?" <laughs> <laughs> well, what you will find is that we are true supporters of the of the sport, man. We are we are supporters That's of sports, awesome. man. I can tell, yeah. When when, 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 when Ant reached out to me, he said, "Yo, we got Vinny Paz, man." I almost lost it because ah, that's you know, so cool. You guys, you <laughs> guys are rock stars to us, man. You know, I, I know what it takes. I know what you guys go through in that ring, and to choose this sport as to to, to for a living. I mean, my God. My yep. God, man, that's that's nothing, it, it, that's, that's nothing you know, compares you, to it. Nothing you, compares to it. Yep, you've always been a hundred percent, man, and, and the fans love you, and uh, you know we all that's love cool. you, brother. And uh, man, we just you know that's cool. I love, love it. This I love, man. It, love so, it. I'm gonna I'm a, I'm a grab your number from uh, from Ant, and I'm gonna shoot you anytime. A text. You, you got me anytime. I'm I'm you I'm you, yours. Much love and appreciation, man. Cool. Thank all Peace you guys, much, bro. Peace and I'll love. Thank you, all you guys. Talk to you soon, brother. Um, cool. Black Fight Fan is on right now. Um, let's head over there. You know, he's on with the sisters. Uh, Bruce Gold, salute to you. Trick Nolte, uh, salute to Curtis Anderson. Get well soon. Scrapbook Boxing. Stormy B-Man, he should be back tomorrow. He had a little, uh, you know, health happening, but he's fine. You know what I'm saying? And I will see the rest of you cats in the morning. Drew Titan, Bronze on deck. Shout out to the mighty LDBC. Another show down. We out of here. See you tomorrow. Peace, y'all. Move!